how's it going guys my name is BearClaw102 and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on two things uh, one of them is uh, rendering out sound and another one is uh, putting sound effect into your text uh, I haven't seen uh, tutorials in both of these videos so this will be the very first tutorial on how to do both and it is my very first tutorial on Cinema 4D so then I just uh, played around with in Cinema 4D and uh, found out a way how to do both of those things uh, mainly was uh, sound rendering so let's go ahead and start so go in your spline select your text uh, change the plane from XY to XZ write whatever you want in, in, in the text uh, you could change the font but I don't recommend to um, make it bigger a little because when you're gonna add the uh, object to it so it wouldn't look uh, all bunched up and it'll look all spread out and nice so uh, now go in your MoGraph, Effector and Spline uh, select your spline grab your text and drag it over to where it says spline drop it in there and now uh, you could go ahead and create your object you could make any object that you want here that you see uh, but I'm gonna go with the cube so I'm gonna change its shape and um, it's really helpful to play around in Cinema 4D and uh, you will learn new things and watch tutorials which help a lot and um, you could add a fillet to it Uh, now go in your MoGraph, add a cloner, uh, drag your cube into your cloner, uh, then select your cloner and go in your effectors and select your spline and drag it over. And now as you could see it started to form on the B spline so if you go ahead and click on your cloner you'll see if I add more count to it it just does that so you don't want that to happen. Uh, so how to fix that is you go in spline uh, where it says segment mode and use index to full spacing right there uh, if you want you could go ahead and select cloner and the cube and rotate it by 90 degrees uh, so the the object would face you and um, go ahead and create more count of the objects And I'll go with 155, which looks pretty even. Spaced out, looks pretty good. Um, no, I'll just go ahead and make 160 there. Yeah, it looks fine. Uh, now go go ahead and click on your cloner. Go to MoGraph, Effector, and Sound. Uh, just to make sure that you have the sound in the right spot uh, go in your cloner and hit effectors and if the sound is not there just go ahead and drag it over like that uh, so now go ahead and click on your sound and go in your effector and where it says sound file click on these three dots and in order for this to work you need a wave file song uh, if you don't have that Go on, some, go on YouTube and just look at some videos how to fix that. It's from uh, you could fix it in your um, iTunes. Um, now go ahead, uh, select your song that you want. So uh, uh, now uh, uh, get your apply mode and change it from all to step. Uh, you could change the frequency colors. I'll go with green to blue. And you could add more col uh, colors in there. Just double click like this. Now I'm going to go with kind of orange. Orangish, orangish, reddish color, 
and there looks pretty good now go on your parameter and uncheck the position and check the scale change your y to about uh, 4 you could make it any number you want but I'm gonna go ahead and put 4 in there uh, and for the color frequency to work just go in your color mode and change it from off to on alright so now let's create our scene and in my intro as you've seen it's got a kinda uh, dust effect to one of my colors uh, it's re really easy to make so just go ahead and get your, uh, select your light and make sure you're in general click on the color and you could change any color you want here but I'll go with I guess like greenish yellowish color uh, change the shadows to shadow map soft visible light to volumetric and you could change uh, its size now go on your noise and select, uh, select noise from none to visibility and you could change you could play around in here uh, do whatever you want here um, but yeah so now if you want you could uh, select your spline and your text end cloner with the cube and bring it down a little it'll look better like that because when you play the song it'll actually kinda the words will kinda disappear when it gets lower and quieter within the song so here's my second light and I'm I'm gonna bring down the intensity to about 80 percent and I'm gonna select the shadow maps to shadow maps soft and I'm gonna do a quick render and it looks pretty good somewhat good uh, I'll just go ahead and create a material form a floor and it should make it look better now it's much lighter in the room now and that's good alright so uh, for your so if you want to hear your song within your uh, timeline just select this speaker over here and you could go ahead and hit play there it looks pretty good and uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and click on the sound and bring the scale down a little and as you can see when I change that uh, make it higher the word the little objects they get bigger and taller so I think I'm gonna bring it down to about uh, 2 2.25 yeah now my on my timeline I'll just go ahead and make it like around 6,000 you're gonna select the spot where I want it to start which is around 2000 so that's gonna be the beginning of my timeline and the end of my timeline will be 2200 so 2200 is going to be the end of my timeline and now I'm just going to go and check how it looks like looks pretty good uh, now let's create a camera select this box for the first person view and 
let's create movement for your camera. So you want uh, your camera selected and uh, your timeline at the beginning. So now go ahead and, go ahead and create a keyframe. And I'm going to make this really fast. There. That looks pretty good. Uh, so now for your sound render, what you want to do is go in your window and where it says timeline, select your timeline, or you could uh, hit your shortcut buttons, which is Shift F3. Uh, so now when you have your timeline selected uh, select your camera go in file add special tracks and sound now select your sound and where it says sound select the same song that you have set for your animation Is it to, I gotta make sure if I have the same one selected. Yeah. There we go. And um, now make sure your thing is in the beginning of your timeline. And go ahead and click on your file. Add key at and hit OK. So it just created a keyframe. And if you have more uh, keyframes throughout your whole animation, don't worry about those. Just grab your uh, the whatever it is called and just drag it over to the end of your timeline. And do the same as you just did for the beginning of your timeline. There. And if, and if I play right now, it'll sound weird because it's got two songs playing at once. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you right now. There, as you could see, kind of sounded not good. So yeah, um, now you could uh, go in your render settings and do whatever you usually do but um make sure you have the format set on QuickTime Movie uh make sure you have include sound selected and uh what else is there and your frame range all frames uh you could do on your film vid slash video whatever you used to uh using over here um I usually use HDV 180 and oh yeah and make sure that you have it set on 29.97 uh, frames because this is it's the real life frame rate so uh, make sure you don't have it set on 25 because the animation will go ahead and be faster than the song that you just uh, rendered out in your timeline well not rendered out but you put in your timeline so the animation won't be in sync with the song. Alright, thanks guys. I hope this video has um, helped you a lot. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe.